evening, everybody. Praise the Lord. Our God is great and he is worthy to be praised. And we magnify him. We are coming down to the last uh, session of our study on heaven. I trust the Lord has blessed you in this study. Let me tell you something. I know he has. I know he has. And I'm grateful to him for what he has done and what he has said in your life as a result of this study. And we praise God from whom all blessings flow. We are here to do this last part uh, and by no means has it been exhaustive. exhaustive. We've just been picking up bits and pieces. But I want you to know that I've enjoyed sharing this with you. And um, I want you to join us because next week we're going to be in Holy Week uh, with Faith Tabernacle Holiness Church, Pastor Cleo Furby. Uh, we're going to be there every night from Sunday to Friday at 7 o'clock. It is on our Zoom station. So if you have already subscribed to Faith Tabernacle's page, the information will be there for you. The Zoom number, the password, and all of that, you'll be able to join us in our Zoom. And we want you to. We want you to come in and enjoy Holy Week with us. I told you before, to me, this is the most Holy Week of the entire year. You know, this is the week coming up. This is the week that Jesus went through for us, starting with Palm Sunday and going all the way through to Resurrection Day. Oh, and we celebrate this time. We, we know what he did for us every day of the year, but this is the time that we set aside especially to remember, to commemorate, yeah? To praise and to honor him for what he's done. Come on, let's talk about heaven. Amen. And our joyous time that we will be able to spend with him forever. Let's pray. Father, we thank you and honor you. We really do honor you. We lift your name higher above everything. We love you more than anything. More than anything, God. You are the most precious to us. It is so sweet to trust you. We just ask that you give us grace to trust you more. Bless every single one that will come in tonight. Thank you for this study about our heavenly home. Thank you, God, for what you have taught us, what you have reminded us of, what you have shown us. Now we thank you that your word, wherein we will dwell tonight, never returns to you void. But it always accomplishes what you sent it forth to accomplish, and it always prospers. So whatever you have to say to us, we open our eyes, our heart, our ears, our spirit to receive from you. Oh God, we receive from you. You might work in us and do what you want to do in us. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. When we left the last time, we were talking about what we will do in heaven. We shared with you previously the description of heaven, what heaven was like. And now we're coming down to the end of this and say, what will we be doing in heaven? And I shared with you the last time, some people think that they don't want to go to, mm, it's difficult for me, for me to imagine, that they don't care about not going to heaven because they think heaven is going to be boring. Shame on them. Because <laughs> it's not going to be, we have something to do. I shared with you the song, Walk Around Heaven All Day. And in that song, uh, they said, we have nothing to do. Well, yeah, we will. We can walk around heaven if we want to, I guess. You know, depending on how, however God does it. I don't even know. But the little things that I see in Revelation about it, we got stuff to do. Remember I told you we're going to be attending the marriage supper of the Lamb? 
we're going to be serving in heaven. Mm -hmm. I don't know how or all the ins and outs of it, but I saw that we'll be serving there. It says we will reign with him. So there's some kind of way where God will set us over certain territories or whatever. We're going to be receiving rewards. There's an award ceremony going on in heaven. And we came down to this last thing about worship. There will be worship in heaven. So when we think about worship, let's go to Revelation chapter 4. Uh, and John says, after this, now, in the previous chapter, he has written letters to the seven churches. So now in chapter 4, verse 1, he says, After this, I looked and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard, mm, that struck me. He said, the first verse voice I heard, the door was open, and the first thing I heard, the first voice I heard, as it were of a trumpet talking with me. When he said a trumpet talking, it's like there was this, when I think a trumpet, I think melodious, loud, um, I don't know if you can put those two words together. But this voice was strong. It, it reminds me, I remember, oh Lord Jesus, I remember hearing a loud voice. It was several years ago. And um, mm, I was sitting on the sea bus, because then it was called the sea bus. And I heard God. It was so loud. Until I thought somebody else had to hear it. And as I looked around, everybody was doing their own thing. And so nobody heard this voice but me. And the, I, I remember the, the thump, the, the, the bounding sound. And it was, great peace have they who love my law. And nothing shall offend them. Oh, y'all, that was years ago. But I've never forgotten it. So when I read things like this, when he says the voice of a trumpet, when I, when I read things like Paul on the Damascus Road, and that experience always comes back to me. Oh yeah, it's been a long time ago, but I tell you, I feel it like it was, <laughs> I was like yesterday, like it was today. It was an experience I will never forget. And that's what this makes me think about. He says, the first, the door opened and the first voice I heard sound like a trumpet talking with me. This is what the voice said. Come up hither and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne, and he that sat was to look unto like a jasper and a sardine stone. There was a rainbow around about the throne, in sight like an emerald, and round about the throne were four and twenty seats, and upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. When John saw this door open. He heard stuff and he saw stuff. And the voice said to John, come up here. I'm going to show you some things. I got things to show you. When I thought about 
the door opening and John entering in, my, my image that I got was there was worship going on in heaven. Whew. And God opened the door and allowed John to see and to hear the worship service. It makes me think of something I heard Pastor Furby say, that as a young person, when they would have tent services and you would hear the, the, the music and the folks inside and how she would get out of the car and run to the worship. Have you ever been in a place where you heard the saints praising and worshiping God and you felt like you couldn't wait to get in? That reminds me that the psalmist said, enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. When we come to worship, we come to praise and to worship God. I remember times, if, I know those members of Faith Tabernacle may recall, across the street, for those of you who don't, uh, aren't members of faith, across the street from the church, there is a laundromat. And there was a lady that came in and said, she heard the praise and the worship from the laundromat. She came into the church. Others have come, so as they're walking by, they hear the praise and the worship and they come in. Oh, to God, that we would lift up such, whew, such a worship, such a praise as, as is going on in heaven. When the door opened and John saw the throne and he heard the voices of worship. When we look in the Psalms, I'm going to give you several psalms. Write these down. Um, I'm going to give you some, and it's going to be several of them. So I hope you got your pencil and paper and you're ready. Psalm 30 and verse 12. Psalm 44 and verse 8. Psalm 45 and verse 17. Psalm 52 and verse 9. Psalm 61 and verse 8, I heard somebody say, slow up. <laughs> I heard you. <laughs> Psalm 72 and verse 19. Psalm 86 and verse 12. Psalm 89 and verse 1. Psalm 89, verse 52. Psalm 113 and verse 2. Psalm 115, verse 18. Psalm 145, verse 1. Psalm 145, verse 21. When you get a chance, read those verses and you will see there is a recurrent word in all of those verses. Do y'all like doing puzzles? <laughs> I'm always giving you something. You read it and you're looking for something as you read it. And I think as you keep looking through these verses, you're going to see something. And I believe it has to do with the worship that's going on in heaven. I'm going to crack the code for you. The word is, and let me just give you an excerpt from some of these. He says, I will give thanks to you forever. 
Therefore, the people shall praise you forever. Are you getting a clue? Blessed be his glorious name forever. When I said to you, the psalmist said, enter his gates with thanksgiving, enter his courts with praise. It goes on to say, be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. His truth endures to all generations. The worship in heaven will be forever. We will forever be praising our God. The worship will never cease. And everything, and can you imagine John hearing the angels? And, and, and um, I told you chapters 4 and 5, you have to read all of them. I'm not, I'm not going to take the time to read all of it to you. But in chapters 4 and 5, you see worship going on. It's, I think it's kind of loud. I hope that's just not my personal experience. But I think it's loud, but it's not noise. Just clatter. It's loud and exhortation. There, there, there's a thing called a crescendo. When, um, when I study piano, and I, I don't play, mm -mm. but I did study a little bit. When you get to this crescendo, it's like it starts off and it builds up and it gets louder and bolder and bolder. It's crescendo. And I think there's this crescendo effect in the worship that's going on in heaven. Um, when you look at the Psalms and in Revelation, it says, uh, Revelation 1 and 6, it talks about glory and dominion. But in Revelation 4, 11, it's threefold. It says glory, honor, power. You see, it, it, to me, it's building up. And then there's a fourfold effect in Revelation 5 and 13. It says blessing, honor, glory, and power. And by the time he gets to Revelation chapter 7, there's a sevenfold effect. It says blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and might. The praise just seems to get a Christian perspective. I can't say the word. Crescendo. Oh, you see me struggling to say crescendo? Crescendo. I ah, don't know what I'm trying to say. It builds. And I thought, can you imagine John entering in on this worship experience? I thought about a song. Um, we talk about um, the doxology. A lot of, a lot of church now just let me digress a minute. A lot of church now is um, freelance. Mm, not bad. But it, it lacks a structure that we have been used to before. We no longer have this structure that we use. And what happens is when we were coming up in church, it was a part of the service structure where you had a doxology. A doxology comes from the word doxa, which means glory. So there was an effect in the church service where you had an opening. Y'all remember when, when church years ago, there was an order to the service. And part of the beginning of the service was the doxology. Sometimes now we still have some form of order, but for some reason people don't necessarily like order. They like, you know, whatever I feel like when I feel like it. And I'm not by any means uh, downplaying the following the leading of the spirit, 
But God is a God of order. Nonetheless, that's another discussion for another time. But when we had doxologies, the service would open up with this glory chant. The liturgy of worship. Um, and one of the songs that we did, I know, in Faith Tabernacle, we did all hail the power of Jesus' name. They said, let angels prostrate fall. Bring forth thy royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. And the second verse said, O seed of Israel's chosen race, now ransom from the fall. <laughs> Hail him who saves us by his grace and crown him Lord. This is the service that's going on. I'm not saying they're going to sing this exact song in heaven, but I want you to use your imagination and see. Say, hail him who saves us by his grace and crown him Lord of all. Let every tongue and every tribe, responsive to his call, to him all majesty ascribe and crown him Lord of all. To him all majesty ascribe and crown him Lord of all. And then it says this in verse 4. Oh, that with all the sacred throng, we at his feet may fall. We'll join the everlasting song and crown him Lord of all. We'll join the everlasting song and crown him Lord of all. What are they doing in the worship in heaven? They're taking their crowns and they're crowning him Lord of all. They're worshiping at his feet. Every nation, every tribe, every tongue. They're saying glory to God. Holy Holy, holy. So, of course, that made me come back to the doxology we did before we started doing all hell, the power of Jesus' name. It was like in every Sunday song, as the choir process, processed into their places, they would say, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Early in the morning, my song shall rise to thee. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty. God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Holy, 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 all the saints adore thee. Casting down their golden crowns around the glassy sea. All the cherubims and seraphims are falling down before thee. Which word and art and evermore shall be. Holy, 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 though the darkness hide thee, though the lights of sinful men thy glory may not see, Lord, only thou art holy. There is none beside thee, perfect in power, in love, and purity. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, all thy works shall praise thy name in earth and sky and sea. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty. You are God in three persons. Blessed Trinity. There is worship going on in heaven. Oh, don't you want to be a part of the heavenly worship? I, I, I love the fact that I'm going to find uh, this uh, scripture in Revelation. Um, chapter 19. Let's see if we can go there. Revelation chapter 19. Hold on. Let's go to Revelation 19. Yeah. All of this worship going on in heaven. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, let me get to this right chapter here. Revelation chapter 19. Sometimes I think I find things quicker with my book than I do with this tablet. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm saying? <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, I do. I know I do. Uh, where are we? Come on. Here we go. Revelation chapter 19. Uh, Why am I having trouble? Here we go. Here we go. 
Revelation chapter 19. He said, and after these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven. What do they say? <laughs> Y'all with me, Revelation? You were probably there before I got there. Revelation 19, and this is verse 1. He says, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Hallelujah, salvation and glory. That makes you want to sing, doesn't it? Glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments. For he hath judged, he said, the great whore which corrupted the earth with her fornication and have avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. What they're saying is because God has uh, put down, because God has been exalted, he has gotten rid of our enemies. You have to read all the other chapters in Revelation to understand more about this uh, Babylon and the whore and all of that. We're not doing a study on Revelation. I just want to point out certain parts. He said, again, they said, after this victory, this is the worship that's going on in heaven. Hallelujah. Again, they said, hallelujah. Her smoke rose up from it forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down and worshipped God that sat on the throne saying, Amen. Hallelujah. And a voice came out of the throne saying, Praise our God, all ye his servants. I told you we were going to serve. All ye his servants, and ye that fear him, both small and great. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife has made herself ready. Do you hear all of the hallelujah, glory, holy? All of that is going on in heaven. And John, when he opens that door, that's what he hears. Can I tell you something? Revelation also declares for us the songs that are being sung in heaven. I want to share that with you. Uh, when we look at Revelation, here we go again, right? <laughs> we look at Revelation chapter 5. I want to read verses 11 through 14. And here's what he says. I beheld and heard the voice of many angels round about the throne, and the beasts and the elders, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000, thousands, thousands. Saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven and on earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them heard I saying. Just this is what I heard. Everything was saying it. Oh! Oh my goodness. <laughs> Everything was saying blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sits upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. And the four beasts said, Amen. Let the church say, Amen. <laughs> and the four and twenty elders fell down and worshiped him that liveth forever and ever. Let me tell you something. When the glory of God hits the house of God, as the glory of God is revealed here as it is in heaven, we fall prostrate. There is something, I, I, I imagine Isaiah, and when he was in the temple, he says, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord, and he saw that train fill the temple, and he fell down. Oh, you can't stand proud in the face of God. 
When you see the glory of God, you humble yourself. So here, everything is crying holy. Everything. Oh, goodness. Okay, Zechariah. Isn't it Zechariah, Old Testament prophet? He says, and in that day, there will be bells on horses. <laughs> crying holy. The bells will ring holy. The people will shout holy. Glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, you better get to practicing. <laughs> don't you come to church and sit up there like you can't, you don't have a mouth. You come in his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise, because that's what we're going to be doing in heaven. This is just a rehearsal. But when I get to heaven, I'm going to really sing. <laughs> I know y'all. Okay, bet they calm down. I get excited when I think about what we're going to be doing in heaven. You think we're going to be bored? Are you joking? <laughs> we're going to be praising God like we ain't never praised Him before. What the little girl said, I ain't never really tasted baby soda before. You ain't praised God like you're going to praise Him. Mm. Ooh. When we get to heaven, there's going to be a praise upon our lips. There's going to be hallelujah ringing from the horse's bells. Everything in the earth, under the earth, in the sea. You know, I think even the fishes is going to be saying hallelujah. <laughs> okay, y'all. <laughs> Don't bother my imagination. Leave me alone. <laughs> Revelation 14, <laughs> verse 2 and verse 3. He says, and I heard a sound from heaven like the roar of a mighty ocean. You ever, okay. The waves of the rolling of loud thunder. It was like the sound of many harps playing. I told you I saw harps in Revelation. The great choir sang a wonderful new song. Do you want to be a part of the great choir? I don't know who all the great choir is, but I saw it in the word. Don't bother me if I take it <laughs> like I see it. It says, this great choir sang a wonderful new song in front of the throne of God and before the four living beings and the 24 elders. Uh, everybody is singing. There's 144,000 who have been redeemed from the earth. I think they're probably part of that great choir. I, you know, y'all, I'm studying. Because he said no one could, no one could learn the song except the 144,000 who have been redeemed from the earth. I can't explain all of that. But I do know there's a choir and they're singing. When we, we're going to be there worshiping, I don't know if you're a part of the choir, I would like to, okay, my imagination goes there. Let's give you, let me give you this last verse. Revelation 19 and 6. He says, and I heard as it were the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thunderings. Saying, what did they say? Hallelujah. For the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. They're saying, Hallelujah. For the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. There is worship going on in heaven. When we all get to heaven, you know, we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't sing in church like we used to. And sometimes that's just the part that I, I miss, you know. Um, when we had congregational worship and you sang whatever song the Lord laid on your heart and that you wanted to sing and you clap your hands and you praise God. And I'm, I'm not judging and I'm not knocking anybody. I'm just talking about what I like, okay? Do you mind if I say what I like? I like to hear someone come out with a song and Especially uh, when it's just simple, um, what they call a call and response. 
Paul's thinking says, when we all get to heaven, what a day, this is not one of those call and responses songs, that I just threw that in here. What a day of rejoicing there would be. You know, we would sing that and you clap your hands and you pat your feet and you beat your tambourine. Oh, it was, it was good. It still is good. Because sometimes I tell you, my son and I, we can get, we can have church here in the house. I have, uh, my youngest son is still here. And him and I can get together and he'll start a song and we'll sing a song and clap our hands and just go ahead and have church the way we want to. And one song leads into another song. He followed me. I follow him. And we can just have a good time. <laughs> I thank God. He says, but when we all get to heaven, I would kind of like, oh, do I dare? To sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we will shout. We will praise. There's going to be a great big hallelujah, glory to God, holy, holy, holy. And the church will say amen. What a worship experience we're going to have. We've been talking about heaven, y'all. Everybody don't go to heaven. There's some people who talk about heaven, but they won't be going there. We've gone through some songs in this experience. Everybody talking about heaven won't go. We looked at one of Mary Mary's songs and it says, Heaven. I want to see you. I, I got to go there. Heaven. We talked about Rance Allen and his, he said, I've never been to Paris or London or all those things, but if I could just make it to heaven. We say heaven is a beautiful place full of glory and grace. I want to see my master's face. Heaven. There is a place called heaven. And when we fall asleep, we looked at Rosie Wallace. I will fall asleep someday. And from earth I'll pass away. But my soul will reach a better place. I'll wake up in glory. We talked about us falling asleep. Our bodies sleeping. But our spirit souls remaining alive. We talked about the rich man. Who died and opened his eyes in hell. But Lazarus being carried. To heaven in Abraham's bosom. Look, we talked about the different types of heaven. That there's a first heaven. This atmospheric. We talked about the second heaven. The outer space area. We talked about the third heaven. Where Paul said, I'll be caught up into the third heaven. And he heard things that were unlawful for men to speak. We looked at John on the Isle of Patmos. And how the door was open and he was able to see. And hear the worship going on in heaven. If all of these things that we've been talking about these past few weeks. If they seem exciting to you. And it seems as though you've looked at the brochure. You would like to go there. I want to tell you. It's a prepared place for prepared people. And in order for you to go to that place, you're going to have to accept the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes will not perish but will have everlasting life. My prayer to God today as we close this study on heaven. Many of you are already saved and you know that the heaven is your home. I want you to be excited enough about it that you live holy here. I want you to be able to know that when you get there and there are rewards that's going to be given. If you don't build on a sure foundation, your works can be burned up and you'll lose your reward. But if you build wood, hay, and stubble, it's not going to stand the fire of the test. But gold and silver, those things, that's going to stand the test. And you'll be able to receive reward. We talked about the crowns. 
But if you have not accepted Christ Jesus as your Savior, you can't get any of that. So I want to give you an invitation. And some of you say, well, Bethany, we are saved. We know the Lord. Okay, that's good. That's fine. I love it. My time is up. Thank you, Lord. Um, we understand that. But there may be somebody who would just be strolling through YouTube, looking, not, not exactly looking for anything particular, just, you know, looking through YouTube. And they're going to run across this lesson. This is what I believe in God for. Y'all believe with me. They're going to run across Bible studies with Adeline Coleman. They're going to hit on this study on heaven. They're going to want to say, I want to go to that place. God will arrest somebody's attention. And I want you to know, when you see this, accept Jesus Christ. Ask him to forgive you of your sin. Ask him to make you ready for heaven. And he will do just that. Listen, this ends our study on heaven. And um, I want you to join us next week for Holy Week service on Faith Tabernacle Holiness Church Zoom. We're going to be studying on the uh, service of appreciation and commemoration of our Lord. Um, different ministers will be bringing the word each night. We're coming prepared. We're coming to worship. We're coming to praise. We want you to join us in our worship experience. We would like very much to see your face. Would you do something for me? Would you set aside next week? Holy Week service, and, and prepare yourself. Uh, when I say prepare yourself, prepare your spirit and prepare your body. Come as if you're coming into the sanctuary. As if you're coming into um, the church house. Dress yourself neatly, appropriately, and come on, y'all. You know, people don't like me to talk about dress. I got to go. People don't like me to talk about dress. But I want you to be appropriately attired. On Easter Sunday morning, our youth are in charge of our service on Easter Sunday morning. And they're asking us to dress for church on Sunday. Can I just throw in a little teeny, teeny word without judging anybody? Please come. But people say, the Lord says, come as you are. Yeah, come as you are. But come respectful to God. Come honoring God. And we'll be so glad to have you. The church is located at 2204 North 19th Street, right on the corner of 19th and Susquehanna. And our services will begin at 1130 on Easter Sunday morning. We want to see your face in the place. But more than anything, I want to see you in heaven. God bless you. Good night.